Hello fellow Heritage of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to what it is, the first installment of Heavy Contrast for Age of Sigmar. And Heavy Contrast is a series of videos where I try to paint a miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this first Age of Sigmar episode, what better mini than one of the most beautiful minis Games Workshop has made in the past years? the light of Eltharion. Before we start, let me please give a big shout out to my very good friend Rick from 8 Point to Start Painting, because without him, this video would have not be possible. He sent me this Eltharion for me to paint, and I'm really thankful. He also makes painting tutorials, and you should definitely check his channel because it's great. So I will leave a link to his channel in the right hand corner of the video, and also in the video description. So, let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of Corax White Spray. And I also did a quick layer with the Corax White base paint over all the armor parts. And for our first step, I'm going to apply a mix of one part skeleton hood and one part contrast medium over all the armor parts. At this stage, don't worry too much about neatness. It's more important we get a uniform layer of this and be sure we avoid pulling rather than worrying about if we get over any other stuff. Go section by section, and once you have section nailed down, go and absorb any excess pulling with a clean brush, just like that, and move on. For example, look at that horrible pulling we have there, but it's easily fixable. Now, if we wait till the till that dries, there's no no way we can recover from that easily. Our layer of skeleton hold and medium is now dry. Now I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of wild wood and contrast medium and I'm going to use this to panel line all the armor. I'm just taking a very thin brush and I'm applying this in between the armor panels. I will only apply this where I see I need more definition. This won't be universal. For example, I'm pretty happy with the definition on those swells, so I won't touch them, but I will define a bit better the separation there, there, here with the stone, just to add a bit more depth there. And also defining this a bit better. You can also add a bit of this in some of the deeper shadows of the lining of the armor, for example here, just a tiny bit on that corner. Same goes for maybe here. Like that. I've now finished shading with our wildwood and medium mix and it's a very subtle difference, but it's there and it really brings up all the nice contrast on the armor. And I'm going to start highlighting the armor. For this, I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh and I will just do a very simple edge highlight of Palette Witch Flesh. I'm picking up all this trim he has on the armor very carefully. You see, I'm just using the tip of, the, of my brush very lightly. Like that. And I will also do a bit of edge highlighting here and there. Of 
for example, here on his feet. And now to finish off his armor, I'm going to apply a final highlight using pure white. It's just the same highlight basically I did with palette witch flesh, but I will concentrate this towards the tops. Like so, for example, in all the top facing surfaces, and also towards the most prominent edges of the armor. So like here, for example, here on the top of his feet, on the point of his feet. Now with our bone armor finished, it's time to move into all the black cloth. And that is basically all of his cloth. And for our first step, I'm going to paint all those pieces of cloth using Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm not going to be careful around all the metal parts because again, we are going to base coat them later on, but I'm going to be extremely careful when I'm near the bone armor, especially in the bits of cloth that are inside. I just finished base coating all the black titles with Mechanic Standard Grey and I will admit reaching all the inner parts was interesting, like kind of a very nerdy and weird Kama Sutra. But in the end I did manage to do it without many problems and now I am just going to apply a layer of Black Templar over all those parts. Again, be super careful when you are around any part of the armor. You really, really don't want any of the Black Templar touching any of the bone, if you can avoid it, of course. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, if that happens, try to wipe it away, but in the end you won't be able to clean it off. Just let it dry and do a layer of white or palette wood flesh over those details and you should be fine. With our layer of Black Templar now dry and all the tiny mistakes that we have done and I've made quite a few uh, corrected with palette with flesh and white and now I'm going to start highlighting all the black details. And I'm going to start with the outside of his cape and if you look at the official pictures it's a kind of bluer black so I'm just going to use blue to highlight just this bit and for our first highlight color this is two parts. Night Lord's blue and one part, Thousand Suns blue. And I have my paint here in a kind of heavy glaze consistency. And I'm just going to start highlighting the top folds, especially towards the, the top of his cape.
Our highlight with the 2 to 1 mix of Night Lords Blue and Thousand Suns Blue is done. Now I'm going to move into pure th uh, Thousand Suns Blue. And I'm going again to thin it down to a heavy glaze consistency. And Thousand Suns Blue is a fantastic color to do this because it's extremely transparent on its own. So we will we are going to take advantage of that of those properties and jump straight onto it instead of going another step in between. So I'm just doing the same highlight on the faults. Again, I'm concentrating this highlight towards the very top of the cape. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into a 50-50 mix of Fenrisian Grey and Thousand Suns Blue. And, um, and now I'm going to do a very thin lines of this in the tops of the folds. As you can see, I'm just using the very tip of my brush. And I'm being very gentle and very careful with this. And now for my final highlight on the on the blue cape, I'm going to use pure Fenrisian grey. I have my Fenrisian grey quite thin down as you can see. And I'm just going to do the same highlight I did before, but taking less space and concentrating it more towards the top. With our blue cape out of the way, I'm going to move into the rest of the black details. And for this, I'm first going to highlight them using Eshing Grey. I will just take my Eshing Grey. Oops, that was too much. I'll just take my Eshing Grey and I will do a very thin edge highlight across the folds. And pick out all the edges of the black details. For our second highlight on the black details, I'm going to use Downstone. This is a bit hard to show, but I hope you can see it. I'm going to do the thinnest edge highlight I can possibly make. Just there. Focus it on the edges and corners like so. Our highlight of Dunstone is done. And now I'm going to move into the last highlight. This is Administratum Grey. And I will do the same very thin edge highlight as we did with Dunstone, but 
I will just focus it in the very tips of its section. Our highlight of Administratum Grey is finished and I'm going to move into the last highlight for the black details, this is Corax White and I'm going to do very small dots in the just the very tips and corners, for example here, here where the he meets the center, a small dot there, very small dots. All our black details are now done and our model now has a head and now I'm going to paint all the blue details. This includes these really not annoying tassels that don't break at all when you hold the miniature, look at them or try to paint them and this strap of cloth here. And I've base coated them using Corax White and now I'm going to apply a layer of Achillean Green over them. While the Achillean green dries, I'm going to apply a layer of contrast paints over his headdress or whatever this is called and the grips on his swords. And this is a mix of one part a Space Wolf's grey, one part a Thermatic Blue and one part Contrast Medium. I will start with his head and I will just apply this here like that. And now. I'm going to absorb and clean towards the exterior, leaving more contrast paint depositing there, like that. Same goes for the grips of his sword, but I will just do a uniform layer here. As always, be very careful when painting around the white armor because we want to stain that with other colors the less we possibly can. The Achillean green is now dry, and I'm going to apply a second layer over all those bits that I did with Achillean green using a mix of one part Black Templar and three parts Contrast Medium. Our layer our black temper and medium is now dried over all those blue parts and I'm going to start highlighting them and the first highlight will be Ariman Blue and I will just do a thin edge highlight of Ariman Blue over those details. For our second highlight on those parts, I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Fembrisian Grey and Ariman Blue. And I'm just focusing this 
basically the same highlight but focused on all the corners. Same here. I'm just getting less area with this color than I did previously but it's basically the same step. And here I will just focus this more towards the tips of each of these tassels. Now finally for the last highlight, on those blue details I'm going to use Fenrisi and Grey. And I will just do very small dots, just in the very corners, like so. Here as well, and here in the tassels the same. I will just do very small dots just at the end. With those blue details now done, I'm going to move into his headpiece and I'm going to start highlighting all those blue details using blue and grey. Basically just focus my highlights towards the edge of each of these hair areas. Also don't forget to do an edge highlight on his hilts. I will just do a line of Wufu and Grey. Just like that. And now for a final highlight on those on those bits, I'm going to use pure white. And I will just do a highlight of white towards the tips of each strand of hair. With all those details done, it's now to move into the last large area of Eltharion, that is, of the golden metal that he is, that he has. And for this, I'm going to use a two-to-one mix of Retributor Armor and Stronghold Silver. Just paint with this mix all the metal details, with the exception of his swords, of course. Those will be steel. With all the gold details base coated, I'm going to wash them. For this I'm going to use a mix of one part wild wood and four parts contrast medium. Our wash of wild water medium is now dry and I'm going to highlight all the gold details. For this I'm going to use the same mix that I use for the base coat. This is one part retributor armor and two parts stonehold silver. And I'm just going to basically do a very broad highlight, almost covering all the raised surfaces with this, because I want my metal to be quite pale. With that highlight done, now I'm going to do a final edge highlight using this pure Stonehold Silver.
With all our gold now finished, I'm going to apply a layer of Magus Purple over his gems. Those gems were previously cleaned using Wraithbone. While the Magus Purple dries, I'm going to start basically the stones that he's standing in, and for this I'm going to use Iron Rack Skin. All those base coats are now dry, then I'm going to start washing the two rocks on his base. And for this I'm going to use the same mix I use for the white plumes on his head. This is one part Space Wolf's Grey, one part the Thermatic Blue and one part Contrast Medium. While that wash dries, I'm going to finish painting his gems. And for this I'm going to use two parts of the China Lilac and one part white. And I'm going to place a highlight with this right there in the gem. Like that. And also here on his swords, of course. And finally, for the gems, I'm going to take pure white and do a final highlight. Now it's time to finish off the rock on his base, and for that I'm going to do a dry brush using Rufuan Grey. With that dry brush done, I will also add some highlights with Rufuan Grey with a regular brush, especially in all the bits that were too risky to use the dry brush. Just like that. This will help unify the whole rock so it doesn't look like one part is highlighted and the other isn't. With the two rocks done, I'm going to move into these flowing bits of grass and I'm going to apply a layer of two parts Akaros Dunes and one part Militarum Green. And now, to finish off those bits, I'm going to do a very simple highlight using Wraithbone. I will just pick up the tips, like so. It's now time to finish Altharion, and for that, the only thing left to paint are his two swords. And I base coated them using Iron Breaker, but the footage of the first coat is sadly not usable, but you can see me here applying a second coat of it, just in case you want to see me do that. And now I'm just going to shade those swords. For this, I'm going to use Grief Charger Grey, 
and I will first of all do a TMM effect. So I will take Grief Charger Gray and just apply it in this motion on this side of the sword and on this other motion on the other side. Same goes for the second sword. I will apply it here on the top and here on the bottom. I will also drop a bit of this into the room there. Like that. Same here, I will just take this time to apply Rift Charger Grey into all the recess details. Once this coat dries, I will apply a second and a, and a third layer in the same way. If you want to see the full detailed process, I actually have a video where I do that. You can go and check it out here. But I will see you once I've done these three coats of Grief Charger Grey. My three layers of Grief Charger Grey are now done and I'm going to smooth out this, this transition with a glaze of Iron Breaker. You can see here how thin the Iron Breaker is and I'm just going to apply a glaze and this glaze will be in the opposite direction we did our layer of Grief Charger Grey. And now to finish off his blades and the whole mini, I'm just going to do an edge highlight with the Stonehold Silver on the blades. And with that step done and his base painted, the light of Altharion is finished and I'm extremely happy with this one. It was so much fun to paint, one of the most enjoyable miniatures I've ever painted, by far. It's so beautiful and it just paints very well. I really hope you enjoyed as much as I did and expect more Age of Sigmar content very soon. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. But most importantly, there is Patreon. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Patreon helps me do all the cool projects that I want to make and helps me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for your generosity. I said guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Ben Morin, Kieran Omorthail, Victor Domen, Michael Boyer, Charles Armintas, Christoph Moret, Daniel Figueiredo, Joshua Bohanan, Ryan Mann, Oliver Pellert, Bell Drain, Kevin Sula, Skildenar, Leonard Lindemann, Jonathan Ekelung, Dr. V, G-Force, Eldrick Edge, Sasha Pack, JT Butler, Manuel Villera Partida, Josh Simpson, Dominic Trevizo, R Richard Kwiatkowski, Sheeny, Brent Sillinger, Mark Jarvis, Table Miniatures, and Gareth Smith for being the coolest persons on the planet. Be like these fine folks, join my Patreon, and take control.